Hi everybody, my name is Tichomir and welcome to the second Temporal Community Support Ask and Learn video. In these videos, we pick one of your questions from the Temporal Community Forum, give, provide an answer and all learn together. So for this question, one of our user asks, how can I get the failure details of a failed workflow execution? So this particular question was tagged as Java SDK, but the same question really applies to all of the temporal SDKs as well. So let's take a look at how we can answer this question. To get started, I first wanted to talk about uh, the temporal server persistence configurations. In this configuration, you typically have to define um, two uh, persistence stores. The one being the default store, which basically where you store your workflow histories, as well as the workflow mutable state. And then Temporal also provides a visibility store. So with visibility, you can, just like with the default, pick, for example, the three supported database types, Cassandra, MySQL, and Postgres. But also Temporal provides advanced visibility, which is backed by Elasticsearch. Um, so via dynamic config, you can also configure, for example, where this advanced or visibility data should be stored. Should be stored in the visibility store that you define. Should it be stored in advanced, advanced visibility if you define it via config, or there is also an option via dynamic config to store your visibility data to both places or both of the stores as well. <clears throat> the reason why I bring this up is basically temporal is <clears throat> not meant to be the data storage, even though we have just defined our persistence. There is this thing called retention period. So basically, Temporal workflows can run forever. As long as a workflow is executing or is running state, it can execute as long as you might need or as long you know, as, as you define. However, once a workflow completes, whether that be a completion as far as successful completion or in our case what we're our user asking for a failure, um, Temporal has this thing called retention period. And retention period is the amount of time that both your workflow histories, the work mutable state, as well as, uh, as well as the visibility records stay persisted until they are deleted. Retention periods are set by namespace. So on the top, if you see, for example, we ran the command tctl, tctl being the temporal CLI, and we ran a tctl, we gave it a namespace name, in, in this case, our namespace is called default, and then we ran the describe command to describe our namespace. In, and in the red circle, you can see that the retention for this particular namespace is set to 24 hours. Um, <clears throat> we can update the retention period for a certain namespace, or we can also set it when we create a namespace that using TCTL, or you can also do the same thing with your SDK APIs. Uh, on the bottom command, uh, under set retention, we'll see that we have, um, again, using TCTL, we say for our quote-unquote default named namespace, we want to update this namespace, and we set the retention parameter in the red circle to three. Uh, this number three represents days in this case, and we can update our um, retention period for our namespace. Uh, what does this really mean? Again, going back to the question, the user asked, how can I get this information for failed workflows? The first thing we have to understand is that, yes, you can get it, and we will <laughs> show that in the next slides. However, one important thing is that this particular information, once workflow execution completes, um, is only going to be available up to the retention period that you have set for the namespace where this workflow execution ran. So yeah, mind that uh, the retention period values are minimum one day, maximum 30 days in uh, OSS temporal. And if you need your um, this data persisted for long periods of time, make sure to check out the temporal archi archival feature um, and see how you can do that as well. So all right, so let's keep going. Now, can workflows fail? The user asks, we're looking for information for failed workflows. And yes, uh, workflows 
when they're completed executing they have a status and the status can be um, successful completion or completed or they can have a number of failed statuses such as failed timed out and things like that so what we're looking at here is some information from the temporal web ui and we have the we see that we have some sort of workflow execution with the workflow and greeting workflow we have a started at and close time and we have a status in this case our workflow execution failed um, in this case our work but this particular workflow execution failed because we didn't handle uh, an activity failure in this case um, which happens a lot most of the time you know kind of failed workflows happen because we didn't handle some sort of activity failure or child work will failure and things like that now below in the second circle we see that we also have a result so with temporal even failed workflows have a result field and this result field includes a bunch of information about this particular failure and what exactly happened during workflow execution to get it to a failed state now again we see here the close time so once depending on this close time meaning our workflow completed at that time we we can take this time and then add our retention period and you can figure out <coughs> that way how long this particular information being both <coughs> the workflow histories and visibility data will be stored within temporal until retention period hits again and this information is removed now if we expand in, in your UI, whether you use version V1 or V2 or whatever, you can expand the workflow results. And we can see that Temporal stores a lot of information about the failure that actually happened. If we see here going from top to bottom, we can see that we have some sort of message. In this case, our message is that our activity uh, failed during our workflow execution. We didn't handle it properly We're using, you know, try catch blocks or, or checking the error and things like that or making sure that, that we're handling the error and we have some other information for example we have a cause in this case our cause itself has a message which is some simulated error uh, we have a stack trace because we ran this particular workflow with java sdk we have a full stack trace and uh, we can see exactly what happened we have this information called application failure information and this is very important because Temporal gives you this kind of um, out-of-the-box information about the failure, such as application failure and activity failure and things like that. But in this case, we see that in our application failure inf info block, we see that what type of failure it is. In this case, again, being Java, it was a null pointer exception that we didn't um, handle. After all, the activity retries uh, were exhausted. We didn't handle the MPE which caused the failure of workflow. And we also have this activity failure information, which gives us a lot of information about the activity that caused the failure of the workflow execution. In this case, we can see even the event IDs, the identity, meaning the identity of the, of the worker that was attempting to, or has executed or tried to execute this activity. We can see the activity type. Uh, we can see even the activity ID, which we can then correlate in in our workflow history we see this thing called retry state which in this case tells us that it was called you know we'd retry this activity due to timeouts and you know we can say failure info we say failure activity failure information and so temporal gives you a lot of this information and going again back to the question our user is asking basically okay i can see this information in the ui i have some failed workflows i can see all this info now i need this uh, in, in my code, I need to use um, um, temporal SDKs in order to get this information out that is already presented or available in, for example, in the web UI. All right, so let's take a look at that. So, but before we take a look, one important thing that I wanted to show, and we kind of saw it on the last slide, is temporal failures API. All the communication between your SDKs, whether that be your client code or your workers that communicate. All this communication between uh, your code that you're uh, in the end executing on your machines and a temporal server front end service happens over gRPC. And all this information is, is bound by some sort of APIs. And so are really failures. In a lot of different programming languages, we cannot really serialize all the exceptions. This is especially true in Java. 
And instead of trying to somehow serialize things, what we do in Temporal is basically say, look, we have a failure uh, message, which we define in this case, as you can see, as a proto file. And this can be, again, uh, generated as code in all the SDKs. And all the Temporal SDKs use the same type of <coughs> sorry, APIs uh, for this. And this failure type is going to include this thing called application info that we saw on the previous slide. In case our, you know, we have some timeout failure information, if our you know, workflows or activities get canceled, we can get canceled failure info and things like that. So really, this type of information that we see regarding a failure of a workflow um, is, is fully serializable and deserializable. So even though you might have ran, for example, your workflow using the Java SDK, you can get our failure information in any of the other SDKs. And this is kind of what we also wanted to show, I wanted to show in this video as well. Okay, so finally, let's get to actually answering the user's question, which means how do we get this failure information? And because the user tagged it with Java SDK, let's go ahead and show that first. Um, in our code, so this is, um, uh, some sort of code that, of course, uses the temporal Java SDK and uses its client API. So the first thing that we're going to do on top is create some sort of workflow stub. And we're going to create an untyped workflow stub, meaning it's a stub where we can pass a workflow ID. In this case, we can match the workflow ID of, of our failed workflow that we saw earlier in, in, in the web UI. And we can also uh, provide an optional um, <clears throat> um, workflow run ID, and also we can provide an optional workflow type in this case. Now, this particular workflow stub is going to attach to an already failed workflows. If you look at, for example, uh, a workflow client, uh, all the methods, there is a number of things, number of ways to create a workflow stub to start workflow executions. Uh, we have workflow stubs in this case that attach for an already uh, either running or in, in our case, failed workflow execution. So once we create a stub, we're going to have a try catch block in this case, and we're going to call workflow stub .get results. And workflow stub .get results on, on an untyped workflow stub is basically saying, just get me the results back uh, if the workflow is already running, which in case it's or not, it might be a blocking call to wait for the actual results. In this case, we're just going, since our workflow already failed, uh, we are going to just get the results back um, of our failed workflow. The cool thing about this code is that we don't have to have our workers running to get this result information. <coughs> and, and that's very important. Uh, this is unlike, for example, when you want to query uh, already completed uh, or, or, or failed workflow execution, where you do have to have your workers running. For that, for workflow stub to get result, you don't have to get your workers running, and you basically just get the result back that we saw on the previous slides, as far as the JSON goes, of the result field of the workflow execution. So now let's take a look at um, um, getting the failure info. In the previous slide, as we saw, we have can catch a workflow failed exception. And in this case, because our activity failed, we can basically say, okay, uh, get the cause of our workflow failed exception in this case, because this workflow did fail, we have to catch it, and we can convert it to activity failure. And now we can call this print failed activity info method, which we'll see in the next slide, to get all of this info out. So if we look at on top, we can get the worker identity, we can get the activity ID type, again, the scheduled and the start event IDs, we can get the retry type, the error type, the error message, and for Java SDK, we can also get the stack trace as well. So you can see with using just the Java, uh, temporal Java SDK APIs, we can get all this information that we previously saw in the web UI as well. So we talked about how uh, failures in temporal are, are basically defined via, via defined protos or an API that exists. So even though we executed this particular, um, how do you say, work with the Java SDK, we can do get the same exact failure information. We have the Go SDK as well. So the way we're going to do that 
and is if you see on top of this we we are going to say uh, client dot get workflow uh, this is going to return us a, a, a workflow run and with get workflow again we can uh, attach ourselves or get the workflow execution for either already running or a, in our case already failed workflow execution and we pass the exact same things like a workflow id and run id in this case and then once we do that we call a get on that basically um in our case there's going to be you know of course our failed we're going to get an error and we can go use the same type of uh way we did with java to get the workflow execution error and we can unwrap that into activity error and our application error and again we can get all this information like a worker identity activity id start end events error types error message and things like that too all right so hopefully this uh answers uh the question i hope you guys learned something uh thank you one very much for for being here and listening and i hope to see you guys in the community um community.temporal.io thanks bye